This video is about how to add borders to your SketchUp drawings. You might want to have borders on your drawing because uh, the border would help you figure out what part of your drawing is in the printable area. Uh, borders might be a requirement for your finished drawings and they might just make your drawings look better. The technique can also be used to add a title block to a drawing. The borders we're going to be talking about are something like this. They, uh, it's a three pixel wide black line that goes all the way around the perimeter of your drawing. It stays fixed, so when you move parts of your drawing around, you zoom in, zoom out, orbit, whatever, the borders remain fixed to the peripheral of your uh, drawing space. This is an example of a title block that's been added to a SketchUp drawing using this technique. You can add text to the drawing uh, and you can set the text on a title layer so that the, your title block will automatically repeat through all your drawing space. The technique that we're using here to add those titles is uh, SketchUp watermarks. Watermark is an image that lies behind your image that's created of your model. It lies behind the ground layer. It behind, lays behind the sky, in front of the sky, and in front of the background layer. The fact that the sky and the ground layers are interfered with here by this technique means it probably doesn't work if you have the sky or the ground turned on. That doesn't seem like much of a limitation for a lot of drawings. Probably in a lot of drawings you don't want the ground and sky turned on. So let's see how we did this. Watermarks are an element or they are one of the parameters controlled by styles. So we need to go to the style menu here which we get to by clicking on window and then styles. That will bring up the style menu. The style menu allows you to do two things. It allows you to select a particular style for the, dis the for your display and it allows you to edit and create new styles. Right now we're looking at the styles that are actually inside this model. Only one style is active at a time but the model or the file space for the model can contain many styles. In this case there's five styles in this model. Uh, the particular one that's controlling the appearance right now is a style called border title. It puts this title on and does a number of things. It turns off the axes and uh, a, uh, picks a particular subset of uh, parameters controlling how the lines are displayed and how surfaces are displayed, etc. So, how do we create a new style? Well, to create a new style, we pick one that's close to what we want. So let's go select one from the default styles. Let's use the construction documentation style. Okay. Now we can't edit this style. This style is one of the default styles that comes with SketchUp and it's a place that's not readily editable. So we need to edit the style that's in the model space. So let's look at that. And that style we just clicked on is right here, the construction documentation style. So when we clicked on it, two things happened. One, was that the drawing space is now controlled by that style. The parameters of that style were applied to the drawing space. The second thing that happened was a copy of that style was placed inside the model. And that's the the copy of that style is the copy that we're going to edit. So let's just change the name when we should call it our style. close to our style anyway. Alright, so now we've changed the name 
but we haven't updated it yet. We need to press the update button. So now we have a new style here that's called our, our style, our style style, if you will. That's the uh, style that we now need to edit to add uh, our watermarks to or whatever changes we want to make. So let's see what I'm talking about here. Let's update the style with, say, let's turning off the axes. Okay, now we turned off the axes, which turned off the axes in our drawing space, but it didn't affect our style dot style yet. We need to update again. Okay, so let's see. We now have a style with no axes here. And uh, there's a style with axes. You notice we have axes, and we hit our style, and we have no axes. So we've updated the style. So let's now add a watermark to that style. To add a watermark to a style, you have to go to the Styles menu, you have to hit Edit, and you have to select the little cube here that's for watermarks. These little cubes represent element groupings of elements of the display parameters controlled by a style that are editable. Or it's, for instance, this little cube represents the edges, the, the faces, the background. And the fourth one over here is our watermark settings. We click on that. Now we're going to add a image that will be our uh, watermark image. And let's pick border.jpg. And there it is. So now you notice we have a border around our drawing and we're going to be required to answer some questions here about exactly what we want that uh, watermark that we just created to be like. Our first question here is should it be in the background or as an overlay? Well, the background for sure for our purposes. We don't want it on top of our drawing. When it's an overlay you can control the opacity so you can kind of get a ghosty look or something like that with your watermark. And most of these uh, uh, parameters default to what we want. Stretch to fit the screen, lock aspect ratio, all good. So let's hit finish. Alright, now we have a watermark here and on our display, but we haven't updated our style yet. If we go back here our style, if we clicked on that, would still be without a watermark. We have to update the style to get it to save the condition that's on the display right now. And we can click uh, update here or we can click update here for that. Both updates buttons do the same thing. Okay, so now we've created a new style that has a border, which is what we set out to do but we haven't saved it and we haven't talked about what the JPEG image is like that created the borders and that's coming up. Okay, now we need to save the style. We've saved the style in the sense that it's inside the model but it's not on the disk where it could be accessed if you wanted to use it with another model. So what we need to do to accomplish that is we need to right click the style we just created, hit select the save as option, and come down here. You notice it comes up with the default name of the style, which in our case is our style. So our style that style is the name of the file that's going to be saved under. If you change the name of the the file, it does not change the name of the style. So we're just going to leave that name just as it is. Let's save. All right, now we have a style that is stored on the disk, but you'd need to be able to find it the next if you want to use it the next time. And to accomplish that, we need to come over here. We click, we click that little option, the little arrow button, and we have open or create a collection. We click that, and we select the folder where that style is stored. In my case, it's stored under SketchUp Config Files Styles. So select that, hit OK, 
Now that f styles will show up in this collection of uh, uh, style groupings, but it won't show up the next time you want to use it. So for that, you need to add it to the add collection to favorites. Okay, so we're just going to click styles. And there we are. So the next time we want to use that style on a drawing, we just would call up the styles menu, go to the uh, go to where our styles are stored. In my case, under the heading styles, and we'd pull up all the styles that are in that uh, collection. Okay. The last two things I'm going to talk about are the J JPEG image that we use to create the border and printing the printing a, a drawing with the borders. Uh, the JPEG image, I created it in PaintShop Pro. It's 1700 by 1100 pixels. I picked 1700 by 1100 because that's the aspect ratio of the 17 by 11 paper that the, uh, my drawings are going to be printed out on. Uh, the border was three pixels wide. It's just inset a little bit from the edge. And if anybody's interested, I'll post a link to the images that I used to create the borders. There's, I wanted to mention printing also. There's just a little gotcha when you go to print your images with the borders. Uh, the use model extents uh, cannot be selected, otherwise things won't come out right. Uh, the use model extent causes your model to be displayed to the full exp extent of the printing space. Uh, this technique uses the idea that what you see on the screen is what you're going to print. Uh, so if you use model extent, uh, the your image will end up on top of your border or in some weird condition. So no model extents with this technique. And you probably are going to want to select the landscape and that's ac landscape mode and that's accessed in the print setup menu. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found something useful here and have a nice day.